Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode. This is your host, Gibran Romani. And uh, if you've been following with us for the past few episodes, we've been talking about the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa We've discussed its meaning. We talked about hadith. We talked about history. We talked uh, technically what it means. And we want to get today in the practical realm, inshallah. And the question goes as to how do we apply the sunnah of the Prophet in our life? How do we make the Muslims, or the youth, or anyone to love the sunnah of the Prophet and in a time where they're bombarded with all kinds of other sunnahs, which are not Islamic, right? And perpetually over and over being brainwashed and conditioned to follow certain paths and ways other than that clear path of the Prophet Again, to join me discussing this issue is today Sheikh Salim Al Amri, Sheikh Asim Al Hakim, and Sheikh Ahmed Ibn Saifuddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let us start with maybe the sad condition that we are in today when applying the Sunnah of the Prophet, and how we are distracted and the things that are competing with the Sunnah of the Prophet in the 21st century. The Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala Rasulillahi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man tada bi hudahu amma ba'd. The Sunnah is here to stay. And there is no salvation for the Ummah or for the individuals. There is no prosperity or success without following the footsteps of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. Even when Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, objected to the ruling of the Prophet and signing of the treaty with the idol worshippers of Quraysh, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, got him back to track by saying, Ilzam gharza. Yani follow his footsteps, abide by the saddle of his camel. This is metaphoric in the sense that wherever the camel will go, by abiding by the saddle of the Prophet's camel, you will follow inevitably. So there is no way that we could attain success and to be prevailing over other ummas except through the sunnah. And this is why people are trying to undermine it. The amount of doubts that the Muslim youth in particular and Muslims in general are being bombarded through these dubious channels that try to criticize to discredit the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the amount of bombardment is huge. These folks come and they have the audacity to speak about the Prophet's Sunnah ﷺ, where they have zero knowledge of it. So this is why we always say, go back to the basics. You can learn the Sunnah yourself, but through the guidance of scholars. Alhamdulillah, nowadays we get people using the social media, the internet, the emails, in spreading the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But it has to be purified. What did Sheikh Al-Albani, may Allah have mercy on his soul, say? At-tasfiyah wa tarbiyah So the ummah needs this program of purification of the sources, that these are authentic. And it needs to elevate their own hearts and selves and, and communications and relationship. And so many times we are flooded by hadiths. The Prophet said, in shur tu'jar. Always they're saying, spread and Allah will reward you. Okay, is it authentic or not? No, don't worry. Your intention is good. Just keep on spreading it. And we spread things without verification. Alhamdulillah, nowadays, the tools are at your fingertips. But you have to know how to use a tool. If I get you a hammer and I tell you to fix 
my window, you're going to break my window because it's the wrong tool. You have to have the experience through the supervision of scholars. And this is for everyone. It's not like a temple that you have to go or a church and address the priest and say, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. There's no confession here. Unfortunately, in Islam, there are some people and cults that say, your ibadah will not be accepted except through me. Because I am the link between you and the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet is the link between us and Allah Azza wa Jal. This is not Islam. But this is what's prevailing in our days when they tell you, don't listen to the Sunnah. Don't read the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Now it's available. You can check. In Arabic, there are lots of sources where you can verify if the hadith is authentic or not. In less than few seconds, alhamdulillah. And we know this when we research, when we write seminars or we prepare our lectures, we always have this hadith and we just check it either through the Mosu'a al hadithiya of Ad-Durar al-Saniya. It's a very huge website by Sheikh Alawi al-Saqqaf, may Allah preserve him. And it has so many divisions it's in Arabic, unfortunately, but at least this is an incentive for you to learn Arabic. If you manage to go into this, you find mawsu'ah on aqidah, on fiqh, on hadith. If you have al maktab al-shamila, you can also have all the books of Sheikh al-Albani. And Sheikh al-Albani is one of the great contemporary scholars who died recently, may Allah have mercy on his soul, who spent 50 years of his life spending between 14 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week, in the library, looking through the Sunnah of the Prophet and compiling and writing and purifying the Hadith. And the best thing of our religion is that you don't get someone after 15 centuries coming and saying, this Hadith is not authentic. Who are you basing your allegation on? It doesn't seem good or it doesn't seem nice. Okay, what about gazillion scholars who came before you? Said, um, they're men and I'm a man. Well, I beg to differ. Unfortunately, there are those imbeciles who surface and they find people to listen to them. I remember receiving a video clip of a person who claims to have found Eureka. He says, Alhamdulillah. And he himself criticizes himself. He said, I don't know how the companions missed this. What are you talking about? He said, finally, I managed to crack the code of Alif Lam Mim, of Kaf Haya Ain Saad, of Ha Mim. He said, whoa, what is this? He said, no one knew this. And I don't know how the companions did not know it. Okay, how did you know it, Mr. Einstein? He said, this is from the Syrianic language or Aramaic. And it means this and it means that. Allah says it's an Arab book. And, an Arabian movie. and you come and claim at the end of the day. So you get people nowadays coming and shooting the Sunnah. They're not qualified. They don't have any knowledge in what they're talking. And it's not permissible for you to even convey what they're saying as if it sounds okay. There are scholars of Islam, and they're not only in Saudi Arabia or in Egypt or in Morocco or Mauritania or in Pakistan or in India. They're worldwide. They serve the Sunnah. They protect it with their own lives. And this is our failure in injecting the Sunnah in people's lives, in our lives as well. Yeah. Would you like to comment on this? I would like to make it accessible for the normal Muslim public. Yes, if I need to verify a particular hadith or check on the authenticity of a particular report of a hadith, yes, fine, I will go back to these authentic sources. I need to make sure that the websites, particularly on the internet, is authentic because there are many websites that will direct you into something different. Deviant groups have their own websites. So please check and make sure you're getting the right information from the original source. 
which is the group of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, such as, mashallah, Islam Q&A by Sheikh Muhammad Al-Munajjid, Hafizahullah, such as Ad-Durar Al-Sunniyya by Sheikh Alawi Al-Saqqaf, such as many websites, and they're translated. Now, all of the senior scholars, for example, in Saudi Arabia and elsewhere, they have their own websites. Some of them are translated into English, like that of Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, rahimahullah, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah, Sheikh Saleh al-Fawzan, hafizahullah. All these scholars have their own websites, and there you can check these things. But for a normal Muslim, I would recommend two sources. My brothers can add to that. I find that Al-Arba'un al-Nawawiyya is a good selection for a beginner among the Muslims to learn the basics of Islam. Because Al-Imam al-Nawawi, rahimahullah, selected these 40, citing the main principles of Islam in these 40 hadiths. And then he was imitated by others later on. That's one book, and it's available in English with their own interpretation, which is something good to, to go by. I would recommend Riyadh al-Salihin, again by Sheikh al-Nawawi, rahimahullah, which is a very great book. Again, it's really gardens of the virtuous. You'd find great selection of hadiths there on different topics, in fact, covering many. Sheikh Abu Bakr al-Jazair, for example, gave us a nice collection of hadiths on different topics and so on. I think we'll find great treasures, not only waiting and checking hadiths, but rather build your own number of hadiths, at least you're referred to, you find as reference, these will be a good nutrition for you to go by at least in your daily affairs. MashaAllah, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back after this. Oh! 